Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this fifth Sunday in Lent here at St. Thomas. I am Pastor Matt Sergeant, pastor here for this wonderful congregation. We welcome you here in person. And for those of you joining us online today, we are grateful that you are worshiping with us today. Let us prepare our hearts as we begin worship this morning with our call to worship. So would you please stand as you are able. The days ahead are dark and full of foreboding. We watch as Jesus journeys to the cross. There is no way to change what is to come. Yet death has not the final word. Let us bear witness to God's new life moving within and among us. God is doing a new thing. Let us rejoice and give thanks. Our opening hymn for today's service is Jesus United by Thy Grace in the hymnals number 561 and the lyrics will also be provided to you on the screens. remain standing and join in our affirmation of faith. It's number 881 in your hymnal. The words will also be listed on the screens. In whom do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
while everyone is still on their feet, I invite you to pass the peace of Christ with one another. Love, hugs, and peace of Christ to all of those joining us online. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm Deb Crawford, your worship committee chair, and it is always a pleasure to be in worship with those of you here in the sanctuary, and we do extend a warm welcome to those joining us online. Go ahead and pull up those Connect cards, rip them off right now, and start filling them out. Or you can scan the uh, QR code on those cards in the seat back in front of you. And for those of you joining us online, there's a link to the online Connect card, or you can find it on our website. The Connect Card is such a wonderful way to let us know that you're here, first of all, but also a way for you to find out how you can connect with areas of ministry and share those prayer requests with us. There are things that you might want to share where you would like us to be in prayer uh, for your concerns or your praises, and we would love to be able to join you for those. If you're joining us for the first time, an especially warm welcome to you as well. And if you've not already done so, please stop by the welcome desk. We just have a little something for you, nothing to worry about, just a little gift thanking you for sharing this time of worship with us. And we extend an especially warm welcome to those joining us online for the first time as well. So be sure to check out the bulletin for a complete list of announcements, but buckle up folks, because I'm going to get up through a lot of these things as quickly as possible. First and foremost, remember these last week? I told you to take them home, love them, put them on your refrigerator because it's kind of like God's art to us. Well, this week, stop by the welcome desk and grab a couple of more and hand them out to your friends and neighbors. We would love to have them join us for some of these events that are coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks as we get ready for the most holy time of the year. RSVPs are needed for the following events, so hold tight for this one. Tuesday night dinner with Chef Dom as our guest chef uh, preparing street tacos for us. You can RSVP for that on the website or by calling the church office tomorrow by noon. The Owls will be having lunch at Cracker Barrel on Friday at 1 o'clock, so use the Connect card or reach out to Lynn Furlong or Marion Ludlow if you'd like to join them. And finally, and this is a big one, folks, there is a chicken dinner that's being served before the cantata this coming Saturday. So mark your calendars for that, but we need you to RSVP because you know Frank, he always has a lot of food, but let's give him a break and let him know how many people are going to be here. Uh, you can find the RSVP for that by again calling the church office or by going to the events tab on the website. Um, then we will finish off next week as we bid our start team a fond adieu as they head off on their mission trip to New Bern uh, after our Palm Sunday service. The following week we'll be holding services at 7 p.m. on both Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and then come together for Easter Sunday services, which will also include our yearly sunrise service with breakfast uh, following that sunrise service being served in the fellowship hall. The children's ministry uh, is still accepting candy donations for the Easter egg hunts, which will be occurring during the 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services on Easter Sunday, which is a little something different, but we're giving it a try and hoping that more people will come and join us for worship as well as have all of that fun with the kids. And speaking of the kids, registration is now open for VBS as well as the summer camps, and that can be found on the website such wonderful things in store for our kids in the coming uh, months. More information on all of this and so much more, including an adult Sunday school class starting up, the needs of the community clothes closet, the food pantry, and 
a whole lot more can be found in the bulletin and you're tired of listening to me anyway so take some time to review that bulletin or the website and now i would like to invite pastor matt and our start team to come forward for commissioning Indeed, it's always a good thing in the life of our church to commission our start team who are going once again, you heard, during Holy Week. Uh, we're so grateful for their ministry. They'll be back in time for Easter to celebrate with us and the ministry that they're doing. But what it is a wonderful thing, isn't it, friends, for the start team to uh, actually go during Holy Week, an important week indeed. And Cliff is the lead here. Uh, we will be commissioning them today. There are many others that are going, I know, and there will be others at the second service, but we think it's important for you to see them and commission them so that during Holy Week, you can be in prayer for the START team because the ministry that they do down in New Bern, North Carolina is extremely important, and we're grateful for all that they do. Two times now. This is the second time I've had to commission you guys, which is really kind of neat. Um, when you went down the, uh, you know, early in my ministry and we got to see all the wonderful pictures and the work you're doing, just wonderful. By the way, um, I just noticed Cliff is wearing a really neat looking cross today. Um, gee, I just noticed how neat that is. It's, a, it's a, the, in the shape of a saw, the vertical, and then when you look at it going across, it's the shape of a hammer. So I, I love that. I love seeing that and uh, showing the work that they all will be doing as they go. So please hear this commissioning and there will be a point in the service in which this service in which you will respond as a congregation, recognizing them as they go on their way to New Bern. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I present to you those whom God has called to represent our congregation and our mission project to New Bern, North Carolina. The Stark team, I present to you those who will support you and to pray as you go out. And we believe your mission is important. And we trust that God will be with you as you complete your service to the people in New Bern. Now, all who take upon themselves the name of Christ are called into ministries of love and service by their example of Christ. As these members of our community begin their work among the people of New Bern, North Carolina, we pray the blessings of God and this community upon their endeavors. So let us respond. We recognize you as ambassadors of this congregation in ministry with the people of New Bern, North Carolina, and dedicate you to service in the name of Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, we will be united with you in your work. May God richly bless your labors. Let us be a people of prayer for these Stark team members. Guiding and loving God, empower these people to be your hands and feet. Help them to glorify you by serving others, by actions and words Make them witnesses of your great love and your passion for rescuing your people. Protect them and watch over them as they do their work in your holy name. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and enable them to complete their tasks faithfully and joyfully. Bring them safely home and then let their experience further enrich us so that we too may glorify you by sharing the love of Christ. Give this team of servants strength, wisdom, and love to work for you as they serve. It's in Christ's name that we pray and all God's people say, amen. God's blessings be upon you. God's blessings. God's blessings, man. Our hymn now, as we continue our worship service together, is Something Beautiful, Something Good, number 394 in your hymnals, and you will also have the lyrics on the screens. Please stand as you are able.
I wanted to offer the prayer of confession, which I missed because I was so excited about the start team. <laughs> so before Janie reads our scripture, let us offer this prayer of confession. Merciful one, signs of your love and compassion surround us every waking minute of each day. As we come before you with our quiet hopes and our secret fears, we long to be like those who dream. We yearn for hearts that are filled with laughter and for tongues that are lifted in shouts of joy. But too often, our quiet hopes remain unspoken and our secret fears remain hidden away. You alone are our hope and our salvation, O God. Anoint us with your mercy and compassion that we might have the courage to claim the life that springs forth all around us. Transform us into people who meet doubt with hope and despair with determination. In your loving mercy we pray, amen. Now hold fast to God's saving acts of old. For the one who parted the waters for Israel is the one who raised Jesus from the dead. This is the one who will raise us also from all that holds and binds us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The scripture today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There he gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Ju Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that me, she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always had the poor with you but you do not always have me. Then the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there. They came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Janie, for reading our scripture for this morning. And before I begin, I need to give a shout out because if you've noticed in your bulletin in the first page, we are celebrating our 17th anniversary of the food pantry. Isn't that wonderful? On, on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th, here we are, it's the 17th, and we're, we're celebrating 17 years of the food pantry. I am just overflowing with joy with the wonderful missions that this church does. You saw the start team getting ready, and now you see there on your screen even a picture of, that was the United Men, Women of Faith, who yesterday, after um, delivering the food goods uh, to the many needy people, they spent all this time cleaning the rooms up and making them beautiful. So we wanna, wanna thank you, United Men, Women of Faith, for doing that and also for all the volunteers who over the many, many years have made this uh, food pantry what it is. We are so grateful to all of you because this really is an important ministry for us. So what a celebration it is for us to recognize uh, the food pantry today. God is good, amen? <laughs> amen. Well, friends, we have been in a worship series called Forward in Faith, 
And here we are in our fifth week of Lent. We're now deep into Lent. And um, we studied for four weeks out of the Gospel of Luke as Jesus is journeying closer and closer to Jerusalem and the cross. And then now today we take a closer look at the Gospel of John and this, this very beautiful, very intimate story of uh, Mary uh, anointing Jesus' feet um, before he goes to uh, Jerusalem and celebrates the triumphal entry and then to the cross. Before I begin, let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, indeed, these sacred words that, and these stories that you share with us are so beautiful, Lord. And in this story is particularly beautiful, Lord, the intimacy that happens and how Mary so much loves Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that as we look at this and unpack this story, that we hear a word from you. So Lord, we ask that you bless our time together. In this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The smell of chlorine wafts through the air. And suddenly, you recall childhood memories of summers spent swimming in a pool that you haven't seen in years. Or, or perhaps it's the whiff of uh, apple pie. Or, or maybe the scent of, now that it's spring, the scent of, of flowers or a field of flowers that just lies close to your home. And all of a sudden, you get these memories coming back to you of, of springs in the past. Or maybe it's the incense from an old church. Have you ever smelled those when you go into these old historical churches? And, and all of a sudden, as you smell these things, memories come flooding in to your mind. Scientists say that while words go to the thinking part of the brain, smells, fragrances, go to the emotional part of the brain. They call it the amygdala. The amygdala part of the brain is where that resides. And, and that's why a whiff of apple pie, a field of flowers, and for some, why a bit of incense is the smell of the divine. This passage from John's Gospel is indeed a fragrant text. Jesus' friend Mary, and she's only named in the Gospel of John, she takes a jar of very expensive perfume, and with it, she bathes Jesus' feet. Scholars say that the perfume was worth a year's wages in that time. And in today's currency, perhaps it's worth as much as $10,000. This story is told in all four Gospels, but each of them are told in a different way. But this text is no doubt important since it is mentioned in all the Gospels. And something fascinating here, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 13, this memorable remark is made by Jesus. He says this, I tell you the truth, whenever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Wow. Now, now, that's incredible. Jesus actually said that whenever the gospel story is told, whenever it is told, the thing that Mary did will always, always be talked about. 2,000 years later, what Mary did so long ago is still being told. I think Mary wanted to demonstrate that she loved him and that she understood as he set his face toward Jerusalem and the cross, the pain 
that he was about to bear. She wanted to identify with him in a way that he had identified with her so long ago in her own struggles. Someone once said, love expressed is not sufficient. It needs to be both expressed and heard to have any meaning at all. In other words, it is not adequate for you to say you love your wife or your husband or your children or your grandchildren or whoever it may be, although that is a good start. You, however, must get into the mind of the beloved and find out what is most meaningful to him or her in receiving love and then give love in that way. Love expressed is not sufficient. It has to be both expressed and heard to have any meaning. Mary, oh, Mary expressed her love in this profound way, this this lovely way, and Jesus obviously heard it and said that wherever the gospel is preached, What Mary has done will always, yes, always be remembered. Notice here what Jesus did not say. He did not say, when I tell you this gospel story, you will remember Peter. Or when you tell this gospel story, you will remember John. Or when you tell this gospel story, you will remember James. Or when you tell this gospel story, you will remember Andrew. Although these are great men of faith to remember and talk about. But, but here in this text, when you tell the gospel story, remember her. It seems that perhaps Mary was the only one who understood that Jesus was about to go to his death on a cross. I wonder if Mary broke her alabaster jar of perfume to to show Jesus that she actually got it. After all, if she had wanted to anoint Jesus like a king she would have anointed his head. And and that's what they did traditionally in ancient times, is they would anoint kings with oil over their head. But, But I think Mary actually understood. I think she really got it. What's more, this anointing of Jesus' feet prefigures Jesus' servant-like act of washing the disciples' feet when he was at supper with them to celebrate the Passover there in the upper room. An act that he urges his disciples to replicate. And here is Mary, anointing his feet, wiping it with her hair. I believe Mary got it. Mary truly understood. And where is Mary, of course, every time we hear about Mary in these texts? Do you know where she is? There's other texts about Mary. She's there at the feet of the master. She is always at the feet of Jesus, it seems. And there's something very special about people who spend a lot of time at Jesus' feet. They have what one might call maybe a sixth sense about things. And when we practice the discipline of spending time with God at the feet of the master, well, when we spend time in prayer, when we spend time in scripture every day, then we develop a maturity that leads to spiritual discernment. And that's what Mary did. That's why I believe that Mary certainly understood. I mean, she really got it. Now, I know, don't you know, that we live in this instant society. We instant everything, you know. We we get everything right away. 
However, there is no substitute at all, friends. No substitute at all. By taking time, slowing down, day by day, to sit at the feet of Jesus. In our text for today, Judas thinks all this is a waste of money. A waste, an absolute waste. The money had been, could have been used for missions, so to speak. The, the money could have been used for the poor. Instead, she took it and she wasted it. And in verse 7, Jesus says this, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. Now let me paraphrase this, what Jesus is really saying to Judas. It's like he is telling Judas, he stop annoying this woman, would you? She alone, out of all of you, truly understands me, truly gets me. She is the only one who really gets what is about to happen to me. I am going to the cross, and I'm going to meet my death. But ultimately, amazingly, Judas sold Jesus for just 30 pieces of silver. Whereas Mary broke her jar of ointment that was worth so much more than Judas received in his betrayal. Judas kept the bag. Mary broke the jar. She gave all that was so precious to her. And that's why Jesus said, whenever this gospel is preached throughout the entire world, what Mary did will always, always be remembered. I understand that your most valuable possession is probably something quite different. I know I have them. Do you, do you have them? And I suspect that none of you have a $10,000 bottle of perfume sitting there in your bathrooms. <laughs> but there is something that is very precious to you, right? Surely there is. Think for a moment about what that is. I mean, you probably know exactly what it is, right? <laughs> I mean, it's different for everybody. But search your heart. What is the most precious thing in your life? In other words, how extravagant is your love? Is it extravagant at all? Or, or do you just simply go through the motions? You know, you sing the hymns. You utter the prayers when you come. You, you listen to the word. But then do you love others in the way that Jesus loved as much as you love yourself? Now, now understand, friends, I struggle with this too. We all do. But is your most prized possession Jesus? We get it from Mary, don't we? We can understand this more clearly because Mary's love was extravagant. And Jesus heard it. She gave her most valuable possession. And wherever the gospel is preached, yes, in the entire world, Mary will always be remembered for what she did. I also love these words in verse 3. Hear them again. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Filled it. Can you only imagine that big jar being broken and, and what that must have been like? And of course, when she used the ointment... The, the fragrance suddenly flowed everywhere. And when she wiped the ointment off his feet with her hair, 
Then, wherever Mary went, the, the fragrance was sure to go. Do you get it? But that's just it, friends. The blessing given to Jesus ended up being shared then with other people. Fragrance of the ointment would forever be re a reminder of her love for Christ. And wherever she walked, when people saw Mary, they caught that fragrance and they thought of Jesus. And wherever the gospel is preached, Mary will be remembered, yes, even today. You know, as we conclude this morning, I have one more thought running through my mind about all this. Because all of this happened not long before Jesus' final days in Jerusalem. So think about this. Such, such a strong perfume would have lasted, friends, for a long, long time. And everywhere Jesus went, this fragrance that anointed his feet lingered. As, as he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, as he cleansed the temple, as he gathered with his disciples there in the upper room, and as he appeared before the high priest and Pilate, I imagine the fragrance of Mary's perfume, it, it still lingered as a reminder of her love for him. Wow, isn't that awesome to think about? And then perhaps, just perhaps, when Jesus uttered his words of forgiveness and completion on the cross, he might have sensed a faint, sweet fragrance that reminded him that he was greatly loved. So friends, what can you do to so show Jesus just how much that you love him? What can you do? I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And that's exactly why I've told you this magnificent story again today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing our call to prayer. Our prayers of the people at various times, uh, I will be saying, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. 
and there will also be a point where I will ask that you bring forth anything that you would like to share with us this morning where we may be in prayer as well. Go with me now. Father God, in whose love we live and move, we pray for a world crying out to feel loved, wanted, cherished, and unique. We pray for a world torn apart by conflict and war, a world that lives uneasily in a climate of fear with no clear vision for future days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for a world that thinks less of others than of self, a world where division between nations, race, religion, neighbor, and family leads to distrust. We pray for a world that is short on happiness, too busy to enjoy this world you have created, too preoccupied with living to appreciate life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a world which shows appreciation for your many miracles of mercy and healing, and we think more of those who care for the sick and infirmed than for ourselves. We now bring before you those we know and love who are ill or in need as we speak their names aloud or offer them up silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 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 Father God, we pray for a world where spiritual longing is acknowledged and satisfied before earthly desires. We pray for a world that needs to know your love, your hope, your peace, your joy, and your salvation. A world that needs to know it is special and loved by a Heavenly Father. We pray all of this and more as we join together as one body and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of our offering, this morning, may we consider that making an offering, giving, and being generous are a lot like planting seeds. A single seed can produce a beautiful harvest. Imagine how big an impact we can have when together, together as a full congregation, we plant generously with our gifts to this community of faith and mission and service. As followers of Jesus, let us follow his example as we bring forth our offerings, gifts, and tithes. The ways in which you may give are listed on the screen. It's also in the online link for those of you joining us online. And for those of you here in the sanctuary, there's also a link on the, uh, on the card in the seat back in front of you by one, scanning one of those QR codes. The ushers are invited to come forward to pass the plate. And may our gifts demonstrate our willingness to follow Jesus and do all we can to continue his work here on earth.
Let us pray. Jesus, we give the very best we have to offer. So take and use and bless this offering, Lord, so that others may come to love you. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn for today's service is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, number 301 in your hymnals, and the lyrics are also on the screens. How is it that you will show your love for Christ? Will you be a little like Mary, giving it your all? Believe me, when you do, your heart will be overflowing with the fragrance and the joy of Christ. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace forevermore. Amen.